welcome into their episode of Patrick Jones Baseball. All right, so this week on the podcast, we are talking about how college coaches evaluate high school hitters. Now, first of all, I think it's important to note that this is the hardest thing to project. It is so hard to project hitters at any level, but especially high school, from high school to college, because it's it's competition. It's They've never lived away from home. There's you know, how is he going to translate? I mean, I remember when I was in the Baltimore Orioles organization as a hitting coach, I was able to help out on the draft for a couple of years. And looking back now to see like how that those draft picks played out, some of the players that I thought for sure wouldn't make it are, are ones that are actually in the major leagues right now. So it's just it's very hard. and It's it's a very messy. And so this is a, a subjective process for a lot of different coaches because timing plays a role in it needs play a role in it and we're going to get in some other things that that play in a role play a role into how coaches go about evaluating high school hitters so context is obviously very important and when I say context I think we got to also note that what position are they evaluating because what position that they are projected to play at and when I say projected not necessarily where they play right now because you know you could put me at shortstop but a coach isn't going to come watch me play and say like oh yeah he projects to play shortstop at the college level so it's where they project you to play at so up the middle players are going to be evaluated much different than, than a corner player so I mean, when I say up the middle it's going to be it's a catcher it's shortstop second base center field so if you're one, one of those players who projects up the middle at the college level you know it doesn't put as much pressure on your bat just because you have uh, you have the ability to impact the game in, in more than than one way because those players who play up the middle are, are very very important they, they can add a lot of value defensively and when I say that you know I was a corner outfielder so I was a corner outfielder which I was you made me a left fielder in college and and we're evaluated differently as corner players because if we don't hit, we don't add a ton of value because coaches can take somebody who's an up the middle player and just plug them in the outfield if they're hitting well. And and but you can't take somebody who plays left field and just plug them in at shortstop. It just it's just not going to work. So that's why corner players at the high school level. If you're a corner player for your high school team. And that probably means you're not going to just get to college and suddenly become an up-the-middle player. So what does that mean? It means it's just going to put more pressure on your bat. And so you're going to be evaluated differently. Maybe you have to hit you know, significantly better than that shortstop on your team who's getting looks, and, and maybe you think you're a better hitter, and you might be. But because he projects as a shortstop and you project as a first baseman, you're going to be evaluated much differently. So where you currently play at, and then more importantly, where you project is going to be play a role into how they go about evaluating you as a high school hitter. Now, here's something I think I don't, I don't, I don't think a lot of people think about, and it's something that even at times, like you know, I, I forget about. And but it's coaches a lot of times they're looking to recruit to how their home park plays. And I'll, I'll give you an example here. So I had a, a friend of mine who's a recruiting coordinator, and he called me about, a, for example, this was a pitcher. And it's just you'll, you'll understand when I, after I say this, that there's, there's context on the hitting side too. But he said, yeah, like I'm not looking to, to, to bring in any sinker baller pitchers because sinker, ball, sinker ballers are going, to, are going to produce more ground balls and we have a very fast turf. Our turf plays very fast. That's going to be a lot of ground balls that are getting through, getting through the infield. And so I'm looking to bring in pitchers who whose outs are going to be fly balls because our park doesn't doesn't the ball doesn't carry very well at all. So I was like, oh, that's interesting. So when he's out looking, like maybe there's a sinker bowler pitcher who has better stuff than that guy who has a over the top release point, high vertical break. But because they're looking to recruit to their home field and how it plays, then they're going with the option that they're going to take that guy who's over the top vertical break. It's the same concept on the hitting side too, where maybe you have a park that that plays to you know left-handed hitters. I mean, I think I don't know if anyone's ever seen this picture, but if you go online and you look up Morehead State's field, you can clearly see 
that it's a very obvious their park plays to left-handed hitters. Okay, it's it's 400 to left center and it's 310 to to right center. It's it's very awkward. But if you're a coach and you're saying that, why wouldn't we just go get some left-handed hitters and have that short porch in in right center field? So it's important to know that. It's important to know when you're looking at different programs, like what does, what's the type of program that's going to fit you based upon, quite honestly, just how their field pulls. I think that's just something that's that's easy to forget, and it's hard to know too if you're if you're not staying up to date. But I think it's important that I say that because I know people get frustrated when they see other people get recruited and they feel like they're better, and it's like, well, you may be better, but they may be just a better fit for that particular program based upon how their home field plays. So now I'm going to talk a little bit about batting practice. Batting practice is something, and when I say batting practice, we all go to the showcase batting practices or you go to a college camp and and everyone does virtually the exact same thing. What does everybody do? They do, they, they just try to pull every single ball. They try to pull every single ball, and it just turns into home run derby. And what I think a lot of people forget is that when you get to the college level, everybody can do that. These coaches are used to being able to see guys on a daily basis hit home runs out to the pull side. And so you just going up there and playing home run derby and trying to hit as far as you can to the pull side – That's not necessarily impressing them because there's a lot of players out there who are very good 5 o'clock hitters, a.k.a. myself. I used to be that way. But once the game started, that that power doesn't translate. So save that for the game and show them that you're a hitter and not just a swinger. And so how are you going to go about doing that in batting practice? Well, what not to do is, as I just said, go up there and just try to pull every single ball, which is what everyone else is going to be doing and and again I did the same thing but what you want to do is ideally first of all if you went up there and just started hitting balls to the opposite field like hard ground balls to the second baseman you're you're going to stand out because coaches aren't used to anybody doing that in an environment like this and it shows that you have a, a plan and actually know how to hit but I would say for the most part I just stick to up the middle just stick to that right center to left center gap and stay up the middle you're going to be able to showcase you hit for you can hit for power. Coaches can see if you can hit the ball hard. Okay, it's not like you, they can only see that if you try to pull the ball. They can see it by just going gap to gap and, and staying up the middle. So, if you want to try to pull one the last pitch or two, there's nothing wrong with that. Go for it, but don't make it a, a habit where every single ball that you hit is pull side because they're looking for hitters. They're not looking for for just swingers. Metrics. Now we're going to get into metrics. So metrics is is something that everybody obsesses over. And I think what ends up happening is is people start to think that just because they have better metrics, they're going to be held in, in higher regard from a recruiting standpoint than other players. And from a hitting standpoint, that's just not how it works. All right? It's just not how it works because metrics – that's just the floor. That's just just to get people interested in you. You have to show them that you can actually hit. You have to show them that you can make good swing decisions. And, and we'll get into all that stuff shortly. But metrics are just it, – it's something that's way overblown, and I get it because we want to quantify everything. But I can promise you no college coach is ranking players just based upon their metrics. They're just – they're not doing it. I promise you, and, I, and view metrics as a job resume. Be you know you you have a resume that you just made, and you're trying to get a job. Like you're probably not going to get a job offer when you go interview just based upon your resume itself. It may get you that interview, right? Just like a coach may come watch you play if they see some things. If you're running a six four sixty or something like that, but you're not going to get that offer just because of that. So view that just like a job resume. And I think one of the, the biggest things we see is is this exit velo. Exit velo is huge. I understand. It's fun to be able to to get in there on the hit tracks. I have a hit tracks myself. And so I see it all the time of kids get in there and hit the ball as, as hard as they can. But, man, when you look back at, at some of the, the top players in the major leagues right now, 
and what they were doing in high school. I mean, there's so many kids out there right now at the high school level who who have better metrics than them. I mean, I, was, I was on, went on to Perfect Games website, and I remember they have that that national showcase, and I went back to see, you know, what Gunnar Henderson, what what were some of his numbers, and he was running like a six eight, six nine, sixty, which as a shortstop isn't. I mean, there's tons of players who run faster than that. His max exit velo was 93. Heck, I've seen kids 16 years old hit balls over 100 miles an hour. But yet, here he is in the big leagues hitting 40 bombs, winning rookie of the year in an all-star. And so, I, I again, I just want to emphasize time and time again, once you get to a certain point, and a certain point, again, like maybe just hit the ball like you're just hitting at 90, 95 miles an hour, especially as a high school player, don't don't worry about focus on getting better as a hitter all right you're going to be able to hit the ball harder the stronger you get when you get in the weight room that's how you hit the ball harder by the weight room i always joke around that there's a reason guys took steroids we can't do that because it's illegal but we can hit the weight room that is legal and that's what's going to help you hit for more power not by going out there and and just forcing it to happen and then we also run into this thing where you have you feel like you have to perform every time you step out on the field. And speaking of Gunnar Henderson, I mean, he was swinging and missing at the very first pitch in the national showcase. His you know the summer heading into his senior year, he swung and missed the very first pitch in batting practice. And twelve months later, he get two million dollars in the draft. So it's okay to to not always have a ton of success, you know, right out of the gate and and swings and all these different things. It's fine. One of the things that I think is is frustrating for a lot of people is the best hitter and the best prospect aren't always the same. And with game changer and, and, and stats and things like that, college coaches, for the most part, every once in a while, I'll have a college coach come out and say, you know, you know, ask for stats on a player. But for the most part, they honestly aren't doing that very often. And a uh, a big part of it is they don't know the context. You know, are is you hit 440, but were they mostly just choppers through the the four hole, or were they you know line drives gap to gap? You know, what type of competition were you facing? What there's just so many things. Who's doing game changer? Right? There's so many different things that that we don't know, and so just because you have better metrics, just because maybe you're even right now you're the better player on the team, doesn't mean that you project as being the, the the better prospect at the college level. And so that's hard to understand. It's it's the same exact concept at the professional level too. Is you know the best player isn't always the best prospect, but that's just that's just how it works. So now we're going to talk about some of the things that, that that coaches look for from just a movement standpoint. All right. Just from a movement standpoint. And I think again there's going to be some coaches, college coaches out there that I've talked to, they have specific things that they look for. But I'd say for, by and large, like coaches just want guys who hit. They're not breaking down every single muscle fiber on your you know, on your swing and video and things like that. There may be some things that they look for here and there, but for the most part, they're not doing that. And I think when we when we look at hitters in general, like there's there's hitter. Everyone has a different stance. There's no just a two one stance for everybody, and there's just a million different ways to hit. And I think that's great. That's what makes hitting more of an art than a science. And you have to understand what's gonna, what fits you best, and you have to be you. So there, there's a lot of different ways to, to to go about hitting, and and there's not just one particular stance that that coaches are looking for. There's a lot of different stances. And you look at guys in the major leagues. You know, there's some guys who are like, oh, like stay in your back hip and hit like Aaron Judge. And then it's like, oh, as you see Mookie Betts, and he's making that more of that forward move and. And so don't get too obsessed over the mechanics because at the end of the day, like how you're built is, is how you're built. How I'm built is how I'm built. And so I'm, I, I just want to utilize my body the best, the, the way it's, it's built the best. If Mookie Betts tried to hit like Aaron Judge, he would fail. Just like how, if Aaron Judge tried to hit like Mookie Betts, he would fail. So you, you got to be you. And you could go all across the board. There's, there's all different players who – you know, move a little bit differently here and there. And and it's fun. It's fun to obsess over mechanics, but I, I just I, I want to emphasize enough that coaches are not obsessing over mechanics. They're they're looking for good movement, 
and they're looking for players that have a swing that's going to play at the next level, but they're they're looking for hitters more than anything else, guys who just consistently hit the ball. All right. And and one of the things that, you know, some coaches I've heard, you know, they'll look at look, if you have a, a smooth swing and it's it's not tight and it's it's not it doesn't feel like it's forced, like you're you're gonna jump out a little bit more than than a hitter who is who is really tight and rigid. But if you that tight and rigid hitter who's stiff and maybe doesn't look as pretty in the box, if he hits, then he's they're gonna find him a spot. Past experiences, I, I think this is something that you know we tend to forget is is college coaches are humans and humans have recency bias. And so recency bias, what is that? Well, there's a lot of times that coaches, if you maybe look a certain way, and they had somebody that they recruited who maybe looked like you in the past, maybe the same mannerisms in the box, you know, whatever it is, and it didn't work out, their their mind is is probably first thought is is not to not not to want to go and, and recruit you too, just because you remind them of that past experience and that past player. Now is this right? No, of course not. But that's just that's just how our brains are as humans. And so that's something to note on top of everything else that I said is sometimes that there's nothing you can do about it because it's just they have recency bias and may, you just looked like somebody else or maybe it works in your favor and you remind them of somebody who played very well who who they had you know in a similar body type type of a thing but past experiences plays a role in and how coaches evaluate hitters certain certain uh, coaches feel like they, they've had more success recruiting you know taller hitters or shorter hitters or whatever it is and so they take that into how they evaluate high school hitters, whether they know it or not. That's another thing, but that is true, just recency bias and, and past experiences in general. A few other things that I, th- I think can be helpful in just how coaches go about evaluating players. And some coaches, it's like, okay, like how do they take a pitch? You can tell a lot about a hitter by how they take a pitch. You can tell, do they have good balance? Do they control their forward move? And and you may ask, well, why does that matter? Well, when you start facing better competition, you need to be able to put on the brakes and and be able to decide as late as possible whether or not you're going to swing because you're going to be facing better and better pitching. And so if you're someone who is always jumping out on your front side or you're an all or nothing once you decide to swing, then you're you're – they have more question marks because once you see start seeing better pitching, it's like man, he his 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 balance is off. He you know, every time he takes a pitch, he's really lands hard out on that front side and and pushes his hands at the ball, that type of a thing. So how they how you take a pitch can definitely play a role in in what coaches are looking for. I think these are some things that are, are overlooked but extremely important, which is swing decisions. Can you control the strike zone? When you're facing guys who are really nasty and and the higher up you get, the nastier they get, it becomes less and less, as I tried to allude to as much as I could earlier, about mechanics and more about timing and swing decisions. You're only as good as the pitches you swing at, period, end of story. If you look at the hitters in the MLB across the board, like they make good swing decisions. They control the strike zone. And so if you're striking out a good amount – at the high school level and not walking a ton and so your strike maybe you have 15 strikeouts and three walks or five walks that to me is man this guy how is how is he going to be able to control the strikes at the college level if he can't even control it when he's facing low 80s at the high school level and so if there is a stat that some coaches will look at it, it might be that that strikeout to walk ratio because that's something that you know no matter where you're playing at the competition or whatever it is, those numbers are those numbers. It doesn't necessarily matter what type of field you're on, how, you know, you can't lie about that. So strike out to walk ratio, controlling the strike zone, extremely, extremely important. Bat to ball skills. You know, I've always think, you know, does it have to be the perfect ev- environment for you to hit? Does it have to be the, the perfect environment for you to hit? And so what do I mean when I say that is, Good hitters, they they hit everything. They hit slow pitching. I mean, how many times has everybody heard, like, I can't hit slow pitching? Well, good hitters hit slow pitching. Good hitters hit fast pitching. They hit good pitchers. They hit bad pitchers. Hitters hit. They make adjustments, and they hit. 
And here's the thing I try to tell hitters all the time is is because you hear that slow pitching, blah, blah, blah. I was like, look, if major league hitters and the best hitters in the world couldn't hit slow pitching, there wouldn't be any of these velo programs because all pitchers would do would just get out on the mound, lob the ball in there, and guys would get themselves out. And you might you see it every once in a while with a position player coming in to throw. But the reason why those position players aren't starting pitching and lobbing the ball in there is because those hitters, they make adjustments. They would make adjustments. And so instead of getting frustrated about it, be able to, to make adjustments and, and don't make that excuse because good hitters hit everything. And, you know, I could do an entire episode on on that. And I, I've already talked about in the past about hitting slow pitching in general. But good hitters hit everything. So hit everything. That's if you want to be a good hitter and and prove to coaches that, that no matter who's on the mound, you can compete, show them you can hit everything. Getting to second base on your own. So I had a coach tell me this too. I said, uh, you know, what are you looking for when you're out evaluating a hitter? And he said, I'm looking for guys who can get to second base on their own. I, I, I'll be honest, I never heard that one before. And I said, what do you mean you're looking for guys to get to second base on your own? And he said, well, there's, there's two ways. There's power and then there's speed. And he said, "You, you just, you, I'm looking for one of those because I want guys who maybe they don't have power, but they have good bat to ball skills. They walk, they can get to first base, and then with their speed, they can steal and go to second base." And he also said, "Like, look, like power doesn't just mean home runs, doubles. That's power, extra base hits. So just hit a lot of doubles. So power and speed, and and don't confuse power with just hitting home runs. It's just hey, hitting line drives in the gap." and then get into second base. So I thought that was interesting. He's looking for two two different ways, for, or looking for, yeah, two ways for hitters to be able to get to second base, and that's going to be either one or the other, power or speed. Mental game, which is something that is one of my favorite topics to talk about because I've never heard a hitter in my life say he, had the, he would have been a lot better had his mechanics been better, but I have heard a ton of hitters say, they would have been a lot better if their mental game was better. They would have been a lot better had they not been able to get out of their own way. And so the mental game is extremely, extremely important. You know, do you compete? This is something that's like whether you're 0 for 7 and this is your 8th at bat, are you just going up there with no confidence at all, or are you just going up there you're still ready to compete? Like, do you compete? Do you make excuses? I mean, I think – by and large, it's when you fail, the first thing you, a lot of times what ends up happening is you're looking for, you know, making some excuse, but we don't want to do that because it, nobody wants to hear that. So don't make excuses. You know, do you panic when you fail? F- failure is something that is inevitable as a hitter. You're going to fail a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot. And so if you're going to be a roller coaster hitter where when you're hitting really well and you're four for four, you start thinking you're the best hitter in the world. And then on the opposite end, when you go 0 for 4, you think you're the worst hitter in the world and you don't want that fifth at bat, you're not going you're, you're not gonna be as attractive as, as somebody who is like, man, I never know how that guy's feeling because he's the exact same way every single day. Every, every time a, you know, some college coach maybe comes and watches a kid and they see him against some good competition or they see him go 0 for 4 or whatever, it's like I, I couldn't tell any difference there versus when I saw him a couple games ago and he went two for four. So do you panic when you fail or is it even keel? We want to stay at that neutral mindset. Do you have a plan at the plate? This goes back to what we were talking about earlier with the the batting practice. That That's the first way you can go about showing college coaches that you have a plan at the plate. But even at the in the game, it's like, you know, some coaches look for situational hitting. Is, is can a guy is there a guy who can situational hit? Because there's it's obvious when you're trying to to move a runner or get a ball in the air or th- little things like that. There's certain coaches that, that look for that from a hitting standpoint. So just do you have a plan at the plate or are you just going up there just in swing mode all the time? I mean, are you looking for ways to get better? Not just on the mental game, but in general, do you have a growth mindset as a hitter? Or are you complacent with where you're at? That's part of the mental game too. And I would say lastly, and not you know, not the end, but are you a good teammate when you're not playing well? Because it's very easy to be on that top step of the dugout when you start out the game two for two versus when you start out 0 for two with two strikeouts and now you're sulking in the corner. It's very, very hard. I've been there. It's very, very hard. But 
coaches are paying attention to that. I, I promise you they are paying attention to that because the best college coaches, when they're looking at hitters, they know that you're going to fail more times than you're going to have success. And so they just want to make sure that when you do fail, you're not bringing down other people and bringing that negative energy in the dugout because it's not going to get any easier the older you get. So being a good teammate when you're not playing well is extremely important because you still need to make a positive impact amongst your teammates who are going up there hitting, whether that be you're, you're giving them you know, ideas on, on how to approach this hitter or pitcher based on what you've seen or, or just being having positive encouragement in general. Being a good teammate when you're not playing well is another way to be able to impact the game and, and show a college coach from a, a hitting standpoint that you're not just a good hitter, but you're a good teammate as well. One of the things that has always opened my eyes and I've always laughed at is is how college coaches love left-handed hitters over right-handed hitters. I think there's a, re- for a couple reasons for that. One, uh, speaking of recency bias, I, I think in general, this isn't necessarily recency bias, but I think we can all agree that by and large, left-handed hitters have prettier swings than right-handed hitters. And so I think that plays a role a lot of times. And then... I've had a few coaches tell me too, and this is this makes more sense to me, is like, look, how many nasty arms out of the pen at the college level are left-handed arms? At the end of the game, you're going to be facing nasty arms out of the pen. What side are they? Well, they're, they're mostly right-handed because at the college level, most of the left-handed pitchers are starters. And so why does that matter? Well, when you have the game on the line and you have a nasty right-handed pitcher, which is going to be what you're going to have at the end of the game, would you rather have a left-handed hitter up facing that nasty slider coming towards them, or would you have a right-handed hitter up where that nasty slider is breaking away from them? And I can speak from personal experience, being a right-handed hitter, it's going to be a lot easier for a left-handed hitter. So there's there's something, if, if you have two hitters that are the same left-handed hitting, right-handed hitting, they're probably going to take that left-handed hitter. That's just I, the way it is from all the coaches that I've talked to. But it's just something to just keep in keep in the back of your mind that you know left-handed hitters are a higher priority, mainly for that reason, based upon the coaches that I've talked to. Now, of course, there's going to be outliers. This is a this is hitting. This is evaluating hitting. Um, at the time, there's there's going to be people out there who right place, right time. Coach comes and see you. You have a great game, and and the rest is history. And that happens. And there's and if you don't have a good game when they come, that's okay. That's all normal. So how can I help you? So one of the things that, that I do do, you know, is is I work with players in the college recruiting process as a as a college recruiting advisor. And one of the things that, that I do a little bit differently is my background is on the hitting side in player development. And so I help evaluate from that lens of, of what's gonna be the best fit for you, what you need to improve on, what do you need help with, what do we need to help you improve from a player development standpoint. And then just the evaluation piece, like what is going to be the best fit for you so we can target those schools? What's going to be the the timeline? And then, you know, I reach out to college coaches and promote the players that I'm working with who I think would be a good fit for those schools. And so if you're somebody who is, is going to be interested in playing college baseball and you want feedback on where you stand, you want somebody to reach out to college coaches on your behalf, um, you know, what I would do is... You can reach out to me and you can send me an email or you can just head to my website, patrickjonesbaseball.com slash recruiting, sign up for a a time to talk with me and we can see if we're going to be a good fit together or maybe I can just answer questions that you have on the recruiting process. So that's patrickjonesbaseball.com slash recruiting or you can send me an email, jonesbaseballtraining at gmail. Dot com. I hope this helped when it comes to understanding what college coaches are looking for when evaluating high school hitters. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out, and we'll see everybody next week.